So you keep losing out on multiple offer situations in your home search. Well, here's three reasons why your offers keep getting rejected. And let's get right into it. All right, number one, pretty simple, but it's you're not offering enough on the price. Well, how do you know how much to offer? I know it's it's a tough situation. It's like you're trying to figure out what other buyers are gonna write on the offers. You're trying not to go too high to make a huge mistake, but you're trying not to go too low. So how do you figure it out? Well, a great real estate agent will be able to help you find out what the average in your particular area, your particular price point is when it comes to a sale price when there's multiple offers involved. In fact, I recently asked ChatGPT to research data that I gave it from our local MLS and what I found was 75% of houses sold for over list price. And when they did sell for over list price, they sold for an average of 4% over list price. So if you're writing offers for under 4% over, now you know why you're losing. But what about if you're offering for over 4%? Well, listen, I see some of the really good homes, perfect off the cover of HGTV magazine. Is that a thing? <laughs> Sell for 10 to 15% over list price. I know it's crazy, but it really depends on the house and it depends on the situation. So there's other tools we can use as well, and I'm not gonna give them away here, but if you're interested, drop me a comment below and I'm happy to send you a DM and talk about ways that we can sort of find out what the other prices are to be able to get your offer accepted and without going too crazy high. Pretty cool situation. All right, let's move on to number two reason that your offers are getting rejected, and that is you're not putting the right terms. You're not offering the right terms. So what do I mean by terms? Well, simply put, terms are all the other negotiable pieces of the offer besides price. So listen, price is typically gonna be the number one factor or one of the number one factors when it comes to getting an offer accepted. So don't be fooled, it's still super important to have a strong price, but it's not always the highest price that gets the deal won. A lot of times there are other terms that are really important to the sellers. For instance, the closing date. Some sellers may have a situation where they need to buy their next house and they want some time to be able to stay in the current house while they look. So having flexibility in the closing date can be a huge advantage. Another term that's really important is financing. So one great example of this is cash purchase. A cash purchase is a type of financing that is incredibly attractive to a seller because number one, they don't have to worry about whether the buyer is going to be approved or not. They already have the money. And for sellers who do want to close more quickly, cash buyers can typically do that about two to three weeks as opposed to about a month for financed offers or a mortgage offer. So terms in financing are a big one as well. Now there are other terms that can be really attractive. And again, some of these are kind of the secret recipe of the sauce that helps my offers get one. So I'm not gonna detail every one of them here, but I would encourage you to reach out to me. There are some that you know, a lot of sellers, a lot of buyers don't even think about that can be negotiated and can be really attractive. Now let's talk about number three, and this is the big one, and I've kind of hinted at it a few times already, but number three reason that you're not getting your offers accepted, that you're getting your offers rejected, is you're working with the wrong realtor. Now listen, I'm not here to step on any toes, to break up any agreements, anything like that. Hopefully you're watching this video before you've written any offers, before you've even gotten into the home buying process. But if you have been through the process, through the ringer, so to speak, and you're not finding luck, a lot of times it could be because of the agent you're working with. Now listen, how do I know this? Well, two reasons. I know this because as a top agent, I help my buyer's offers get accepted more often than not. And when I'm a listing agent on the other side of the transaction, I see all types of offers from all types of agents and you always know who the good ones are and who the good ones ain't. So let me give you a couple examples. One of the biggest things that a buyer's agent should be doing is building rapport with the listing agent. Why is that important? Well, first of all, most of us, like here in the Chicagoland area or any other major market around the country, know one another. They've done deals together. They've heard of each other. They know the reputation of that agent. And it's always more comfortable for agents to do a deal with an agent that they know and especially an agent that they trust because they know they're gonna get honest communication throughout the process and they know that that agent's client is gonna be prepared in a good way, gonna be getting good advice from that agent. So what if we don't know the agent? What if 
me as the buyer's agent, I don't know the listing agent, they don't know me. Well, it's my job throughout the process of the offer and even before that to build rapport, to engender trust with that agent so they know, hey, this is a solid buyer's agent, they've prepared their buyers well, and this will be a smooth transaction because trust me, in today's seller's market, it's not a problem getting offers so much as it is a problem getting offers to the closing table. More deals are falling apart at inspection, at appraisal, because of financing in these last few years than I've ever seen in my career. And so you've got to have an agent that really knows what they're doing to get all the way through the process, and a listing agent will always appreciate that. Another reason is just an agent giving you advice on all these things that we're talking about, telling you about the terms that are available to you, how to structure an offer in a way that's attractive. How to write an email that's important in terms of the email that goes to the listing agent and calling attention to these things. Following up with agents, making sure that offers don't go into their spam box in their email. Texting and following up on deadlines. Doing everything we can to the very last moment to try to get your offer accepted. So listen, if you've been missing out on multiple offers, if your offers have been rejected time and time again, reach out to me. I'd be happy to give you advice and help you win.